clearly each one of these theories can be explained in many, many different ways. So we'll just take one most important uh, facet of each of these theories to explain what is the counterintuitivity and how it is counterintuitive in a specific world. The world of Asiya, this lower world that we live in, is a world that people think that, uh, that I'm doing things, that I'm moving, I'm moving ahead, I'm moving forward in life. If I come to you and I say that you think that you're progressing, but you're, you're stagnant, you're not moving any place. You just think that you're moving. You're really not moving. That's counterintuitive in the world of Asya. Once in the world of Asya, it's a world of action. Everybody's into some uh, something. You're into something. You work hard. You get up in the morning. Go to work. On the go. On the move. If I come along and say to you, you're you're just. Uh, it's an, it's an illusion. Motion is relative. You're just judging yourself relative to something else, but that other thing is also... If you think that it's rest, it's, 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 it's in motion relative to you. You're at rest. There's only one thing which is really moving. That one thing which is really moving is light, the speed of light. And it's always moving the constant velocity. But all that the velocities are relative, all that the velocities can be considered to be stagnant and standing still, because it's just all, each one is relative to the other. Let's say it in a different, slightly different way. The very concept of space and time, which according to special relativity, become one reality, which is called space-time. Even without, without a hyphen in between, it's all just one thing, space-time. <coughs> Up until Einstein and special relativity, so space-time, space, uh, it wasn't one thing, it was two things, space and time. And they were thought to be constant unchangeable. They were thought to be simply the backdrop, what's called the Rekha, of the events of the world, that events, motion and events take place within the framework, the general framework of space and time, which are constant, which are just there. That's the way Newton understood space and time. The space and time are constant entities, and everything takes place within this context. That the, the space and time are simply the context in which all events take place. But space and time do not enter and do not change because of events that take place within space and time. That's part of just the backdrop, it's called, of events. Comes along special relativity and Einstein says, no, that's not the case at all. That space and time are part of the event. Space and time are affected by the event. If you're going very, very fast, so time becomes less, slower, and length becomes shorter. It's called time dilation and the Lorentz effect. These two phenomena. Meaning that time and space are part of the event and they change. They're variables, they're not constants. This immediately, for instance, does away with many, many problems like the age of the universe, because it's all relative. Time is a relative thing. If you're going very, very fast, so time is very, very slow. If you'd be traveling at the speed of light, according to Einstein, so time would stop. There wouldn't be any lapse of time whatsoever. What is the only constant in the world? The speed of light itself. No matter how fast you go, whatever frame of reference, whatever velocity you possess, 
whatever direction you look, a ray of light is always traveling at exactly the same speed, no matter what. There's one constant thing in the world, which is the light and the speed of light. Everything else, including space and time itself, which is now called space-time, is all relative. Relative to who? To the observer. Relative to the observer means that it's become a subjective reality rather than a purely objective reality. According to Newton, space and time are purely objective states of being. Now it depends upon the observer, meaning that space and time become subjective, not purely objective. Now this is, all of this that we've said now is, is totally counterintuitive at the level of asiya, meaning that it's a he'ara, a reflection of atzirut, of the phrase, that we're basing ourselves upon now is a phrase from the market of measures, the disciple of the Baal Shem Tov, that Atzidut is present in every world. And Atzidut present in every world is the counterintuition vis-a-vis -vis that world. That we'll explain this more and more as we progress. It's also a very, very important saying of the Baal Shem Tov that relates to this. For a moment, let's go back to our two Talmuds. We said that the Talmud, the Talmud Yerushalmi, never even once has this idiom, Yiv Chomistabra, the idiom of counterintuition. Whereas the Talmud Bavli has the expression 19 different times. Kiminyan Chava. So again, I, would, I can ask the question, the Talmud Yerushalmi, since it's Chokmah, it's initially the Chathila, it's Chokmah, so it's, it's, the intuition is, is correct from the outset. There's no need to switch heads, no need to turn around, to turn about. Whereas the Talmud Bavli, which is Bina, which is called, it's in the dark, that's the the sages themselves say that relatively the, sa the sages of the Babylonian Talmud are in the dark relative to the sages of the Jerusalem Talmud. So therefore they have their initial ideas, but very often, or exactly 19 times, if from Istapa, the very opposite is the truth. So now the question that I can ask is, what, at, the, at, what, at the end result, which is deeper? Which is more essential? The person whose insight was correct from the outset, or the person who, whose insight was wrong? He had what he thought was intuition. He was in, had intuition. But what common sense is intuition. His common sense, his, his initial intuition told him such and such and such. But afterwards, Ephraim Yistam, it became clear that it's the very opposite. He has to turn his head around altogether. So I might think that that person who, who, who has to have his head turned around is nonetheless not at the level of the person that was from the outset correct. Or I might say the opposite. I must say that that person was in the dark. And now Ephraim Estabron has come to a new, real, a totally new re realization is even higher than that person that from the outset it was everything was right was in place